Hey y'all, welcome back to another ballistic gel test. Today we're going to be shooting Remington Core Lock tipped 95 grain out of the 243 Winchester. And here is the box for that Remington Core Lock tipped 95 grain 243 ammo. We've got deer and hog advertised as the game to be taken with this. Shows a nice little mushroom. Let's flip it around and take a look. Uh oh, it's vertical. Here is some promo information right there. You can stop, pause, and read all that if you would like. Coming on down gives you some info on the core locked bullet and then right here we do have velocity information. So this is saying at the muzzle we should see 3140 feet per second. I have no doubt that Remington's probably using a 24 inch test barrel if not something else entirely. So I don't think we're going to reach those velocities. We're using a 20 inch carbine which I think is very appropriate for 243. There's a lot of youth rifles out there in 243 compact rifles. So we'll see what we wind up getting velocity wise. Let's go ahead and open this up. And I am doing this clip after the fact. I usually film this out at the range but I forgot to this time so I did shoot some of the rounds and there is Remington plastic ammo holder. Yank one out. I do really like how this ammo looks if nothing else. I think the green tip looks really cool on that core lock tipped bullet. Looks pretty nice. Nothing dingy or dinged up about it. It's good looking stuff. Let's go shoot it. And my test rifle today is my Winchester Model 70 Featherweight Compact, chambered in 243 Winchester, of course. It's got a 20 inch barrel. Up top, I've got a Leopold FX2 6 power scope. And coming on back, I've got one of my handmade leather cartridge cuffs. I've got 243 stamped right in it. Check out my website, masonleather.com. It will be linked in the description and the pinned comment. I would absolutely love to make you one. And coming over the other side, I've got my white tailed deer design. We'll be taking three shots from 100 yards, firing into 10% ballistics gel that has been calibrated to meet the FBI's ballistics testing protocol. And while ballistics gel isn't an exact proxy for big game, it does provide a repeatable medium through which to test various bullets and ammo against each other. After the shots, we'll examine bullet expansion, weight retention, penetration, and velocity. My goal is to provide hunters like you and I with the most objective information possible to help us make the best choice for our particular hunting situation. The ballistics gel in this video has been sourced from Clear Ballistics. You can find a link in the description. So let's go ahead and shoot it. And we are down here at the blocks after shooting that 95 grain core lock tipped out of the 243. I managed to capture two bullets. I wound up firing four because I knew that I had lost one that zinged up out of the top of the block. I can just tell when I watch it through the scope, I've done this enough. Anyways, penetration wise, we got one at 19 inches and one right at about 20 inches. Pretty consistent. It looks like they held together for the most part and we did get some expansion. Coming on back to the first block, we got some pretty nasty terminal wound cavities. These are better looking terminal wound cavities than a lot of the other 243 loads I have tested. It looks like they start at about the one inch mark, so these bullets start expanding pretty rapidly. They open up pretty good and then taper off, and by about the nine inch mark, they're tapered off and then the bullets just keep on penetrating. That's about on par at least um, wound track lengthwise with the majority of 243 loads that I have tested. But again, the height and width of these looks to be a little bit better than some of the other 243 loads that I've tested. And we'll take a look at the velocities for that 95 grain core lock tip 243 load. Our high was 2861, our low was 2807, and our average was 2841. And here are those Remington core lock tipped 95 grain bullets recovered out of the ballistics gel. They're kind of tilted over on their side. I tried to get one of them at least to stand up so you can see the full mushroom, but they're all cattywampus so I couldn't do it. But anyway, let's go ahead and go over the metrics. Weight retention wise, we saw 57 and 58 grains respectively, so extremely consistent amongst the two bullets we were able to recover. And on average rounding up, that's 58 grains retained weight. And at a 95 grain starting weight, that works out to 61% weight retention. And then onto expansion, we saw 0.45 inches and 0.48 inches for an average of 0.47 inches expanded diameter, which works out to 1.9x expansion. And that's really about par for the course for a lot of good 243 hunting loads I've tested. 
it seems like the 243 just isn't a cartridge, it's not a caliber that you see massive retained expansion with. And now on to velocity, our high velocity was 2861, our low was 2807 for an average of 2841 versus the factory build velocity of 3140 feet per second. So we came in very slow, 299 feet per second slow to be precise. But keep in mind, we're shooting this through a 20-inch barreled carbine, which I think is appropriate for the 243 Winchester, being that there are so many youth rifles out there and compact rifles chambered in 243. I really think it's more appropriate than not to use a 20-inch barreled rifle in this circumstance for this caliber. And also another note, if you've watched some of my other 243 videos, I'll keep telling people about this. It's what's called an overbore cartridge, basically a cartridge with a whole bunch of gunpowder pushing a really small bullet, which lends itself to longer barrels to get that maximum velocity. So what that means basically is the shorter your barrel on a 243 or any other overbore cartridge, it's going to have a disproportionately greater effect on velocity loss as compared to some other cartridges. So for example, a way to think about that, say you've got a 24 inch barreled 243 and a 24 inch barreled 308 Winchester. If you hack off four inches a barrel from both of them, the 243 is going to lose a lot more velocity, a lot more percentage change than the 308. And that's because proportionately it has a lot more gunpowder for the size of bullet. And now on to penetration. We saw 19 inches and 20 inches respectively for an average rounded up of 20 inches of penetration. That's pretty good. That's right there on par with a lot of other 243 loads. All right, y'all, time for my final thoughts on that Remington Corelock tipped 95 green load out of the 243. And I've actually been pretty excited to test this load. I've had some sort of mixed bag results with different Corelock loads and core lock tip load so i was really curious to see how this one did and honestly i think it did pretty good for what it is so let's go ahead and go over it i got my cheat sheet weight retention was decent for what this bullet is essentially this is a ballistic tip bullet that's what they've created here and with a 243 it's small and going really fast so the fact that it held together even as good as it did i think is okay 61 percent weight retention honestly i'm surprised it wasn't less so i'm kind of happy with it this thing is give you a good shock when it hits and then expansion wise actually pretty good for the 243 1.9x expansion it was fairly consistent and i wish i could have recovered that third bullet so we could measure it but alas i only got two it is what it is velocity wise we came in quite a bit under the factory stated spec 299 feet per second slow but as I've said in most of my videos, the 243 is an overbore cartridge, meaning it's a small bullet with a bunch of gunpowder. It needs as much barrel length as you can get to push it as fast as it's able to go. And remember, I'm using a 20 inch barreled carbine, which I think is appropriate for the 243 Winchester. A lot of people out there are using the youth rifles, compact rifles in 243 that have those 20 inch and even shorter barrels. The old school Ruger compact M77, I think had a 16 inch barrel in 243. I would love to get a hold of one of those and test velocity because it would be really low. So honestly, I'm not surprised with the velocity that we wound up getting, 2,841 feet per second on average. That's pretty good. It's still going really freaking fast. And then penetration wise, this is right there with the best of the 243 loads that I've tested. 19 inches and 20 inches on the two bullets that I recovered. That's about where the 243's limit seems to be with most of your cup and core lead and copper bullets in that 16 to 19 inch range. So this is right at the top end of that. I'm pretty happy with it. And then kinetic energy wise with this load, a 95 grain bullet going on average 2,841 feet per second at the muzzle gives us 1,703 foot pounds of energy at the muzzle. And that's towards the top end of the normal range of 243 hunting loads that I've tested. They tend to fall in the 1,500 to 1,700 foot pound range and this is just a tick over 1,700. So it's pretty darn good. So all in all, I think this load did what it was supposed to do. It performed like I would expect that it would under good circumstances. If this load shot particularly well in my rifle, I really wouldn't hesitate to use it. Now, being that it doesn't retain a whole ton of weight and it is a pretty small bullet, I would be kind of choosy with my shot angles. 
I might wait for a real good broadside shot and try and tuck it in right there behind the shoulder for a double lung. I'm not going to be taking a Texas heart shot or maybe even a full frontal shot with a load like this. A full frontal would be a little bit better if you tucked it right in there in the chest. But really with a load like this, it's a small bullet. It's essentially a ballistic tip. It doesn't retain a whole ton of its weight. It's not bonded, anything like that. I want to make sure and give the bullet the best chance it has to do as much damage as possible for what it is. And I think for something like this, you're going to want a broadside or a quartering away shot. Of course, it'll do the job on deer, stuff like that. If my rifle liked it, I might use it. And if you've used it, let me and everybody else in the comments know how you liked it. Hey, if you enjoy these videos, check out my website, masonleather.com, and get yourself some leather gear handmade by me just for you. I've been handcrafting leather gear for hunters for over a decade, and I would love to make you something. The link is in the video description. And check out my channel for more hunting ammo ballistics gel tests. I have some big news. Lots of you have emailed me or commented how much value you get out of my videos. And you've asked me, how can you be a part of this and help support the channel? Well, I got to work and now I have a way. I've created a Patreon account where you can join me in helping our fellow hunters. Click the link in this video's description and watch my Patreon welcome video, where I describe to you how your help will impact this channel and our community of hunters as a whole. And when you join me on Patreon, you'll get a lot more than I can give you here on YouTube. You'll have to go watch that welcome video linked in the description to find out the details. I'll see you there.